make some issues in the issue. May I please apply I and my colleagues represent the deputy president is the subject of the removal of the subject of the pleas to this court. The application of the constitutional bench is made in E015, my friend, so that effectively the subject matter of removal is being given only five minutes. I plead with you, you must be pleased. How long do you need? Uh, ten minutes. I'll just say. You have ten minutes. You have ten minutes. Thank you. <laughs> you know, can I yes, 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 yes. I am sorry, I, I speak now. Yes. I received the instructions yesterday from the project here uh, that I come and make an application that uh, the project here would like to be enjoyed this week. We all know Kituo Jishiri. We can't pretend that we don't know Kituo We know that all Kituo Jishiri has played in advancing the prudence of the Christianity and the rule of law in this country. So I ask you respectfully that you place my name on record. Secondly, I would like also to place my name on record in my own right as an elder, as a bar, and one who has seen quite a number of things, which I may not be able to say if I'm going to bring you to That is okay. We have done that. Uh, thank you very much. May I then comment on one small thing? My, my Lord, the country is not crisis. There's a constitutional crisis. There is a national crisis. And our coming to this court is like commencing or opening an opportunity for healing in the country. And if I may say so, with tremendous respect, with tremendous respect, this is not a matter where it should be allocated in some five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. No, that is not suitable. Let these lawyers talk. They are part of the healing process. To 15 million of Kenyans, Kenya. a number of them are glued now to radios and TVs trying to hear what is being said in this court. And for the, this honorable court to come and say that my land ever friend, Mr. Mute, will only have 10 minutes, will have no five minutes. Mr. Mute asked for 10 minutes and we allowed him to have 10 minutes. He said so because he was under coercion. <laughs> <laughs> I have taken the trouble to read this constitutional tenure. I have taken the trouble to read the constitution of other countries. In fact, the way things stand at the moment, the constitution law is evolving in such a manner that it's no longer confined only to Kenya. We can have a concept of international constitutional law. And if you read that law, including the American law, which I've taken the trouble to read, and which I've had access to it for many years. Dr. Kamuna, we made proposals and we gave directions. Apparently, you are not satisfied. What is your question? What would you want us? You want to ask give everybody how much time my Lord, forget about the concept of time. Forget, where are we heading for? What are we heading for? So, yeah. Yeah, we want the country to wake up and to revive and to give the life to the country. The country is Kenya, if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Your Honor, today's lawyer 
just say what they want to say. This should be part of the healing process of the whole country. Dr. Sakamenga, I ask you. Yes. We have given directions on time allocation. Your hands are not tied with respect. Okay, tell <laughs> us. <laughs> just tell us, in your view, how much time do you want us to allocate parties? What I'm saying to the Minister, my, 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 we talk about, about time in civil matter, but, so, but we are dealing here with the issue of impeachment. Issue of impeachment of the deputy, deputy president. It's not a small matter at all. It's a matter that is starting the whole nation. It has paralyzed the nation. We, we have had you before. Let the forum to be given as much time as he wants. What we let the professor be given as much time as he wants. Let the only attorney general to be given as much time as he wants. That is the healing process. And from this court, we shall all march forward with confidence. If I may quote Mutaji Makinata, he fought and buried him attack on you. Let us talk about corporate time. Where are we going? My Lord, may Where are we going with Prince Amin? With respect, would you speak to that? Amin is talking. Would you sit down? I am talking. I am going to under the rules of this court, yeah. senior counsel has preference, speaks first before any other person except the attorney general. So if you would please sit down, I as senior I counsel. I will not speak down. We're not practicing all your first thing, first thing. That is also <laughs> true. <laughs> so why not? <laughs> My Lord, what I'm saying, finish, finish what yeah, saying. What I'm so saying to you, my Lord, we need a healing process, and this court is going to provide that healing process. Let the lawyers say what they want to say. What are we hurrying for? Let us not have some people calling themselves professor or senior counsel titles that don't mean anything at all when it comes to this. I think uh, yeah. they, they mean something, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Mina. They what? do mean something. Those, those... Something means something when it's you and you approve it. Yeah. My Lord, all that I'm saying to you, let people talk. Let people address you. Where, okay. where, where are we people, going? People will talk. When the country is burning. Dr. Camilla, you have made the point. Yes, yes, thank you very much. You have made the point. I have made the point. Uh, yes. uh, Professor. We have a sensitive to... justice who has been removed in the, regularly. Let us give, be given time to be able to address you. My Lord, I think those of us who are representing substantive respondents, we all agree that you have given orders that we will comply with, including my learned senior, P.K. Moite, uh, who I believe you have added some more time and he's happy with that. Maybe it would help if we informed Dr. Kaminwa that it is not the whole matter that is being heard in 10 minutes. It's a very small slice of an application on impact. That's all I wanted to clarify. So, Dr. Kabudu, I've heard what you say. Uh, we'll stick to the time allocations, but in the event that um, one party needs more time, they will tell us. When we come to substantive matters, let people. Say I, give, I agree with you. Say. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Where are we hiding to? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. In view of uh, that time allocation, and I thank senior counsel, the senior most going by the Kenya law reports before you. Uh, may I speak to my name? Dr. Camino. Thank you. 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 Because of the serious time that we had to prepare this application, I could only prepare for certain aspects of this application. My colleagues, Professor Gata, and my colleagues, Ntegu and Jiro, within the 20 minutes that you have allocated, I will say my piece. 
it is insufficient, but I'll try. Please give Ms. Professor Gata and Ms. Tandebu and Jiro 10 minutes each, and at the end, when we hear what the respondents are saying, you kindly give me, you did indicate, 20 minutes to do a rejoin. That will enable us to be able to proceed without anybody feeling we want to be here forever. We don't actually want to be here forever. We want to deal with the business of the day. So that, not, that does not change any time allocations by more than 30 minutes. So I urge you a lot. So who's starting? Just, I'm starting. Oh, okay. Yes. So that I do 20 or get 10, 20, because he has to deal with some authority. I didn't get enough time. I mean, I'm able to tell. Then I'll do the rejoinder. But now the, the application that is before you is dated today. It is supported by the affidavit sworn by okay. it is supported by the affidavit sworn by Honorable David Muni Madenge. And uh, for the record, all lawyers from Matiba, Ogada, Debwa, and myself, the record indicates we act for everybody without drawing any distinctions because there are there will be no time for that. So we act for all the respondents, for the petitioners, for purposes of uh, E015. My Lord, before going on to argue this application, there is a small point that uh, I wish to make regarding the issue of regarding the issue of uh, why are we having a situation where to everybody watching we seem to be following an unusual path. My Lord, there is one simple substantive issue of procedure that we need to point out. The petitioners are before you on account principally of the violations of the Bill of Rights. The petitioners are also here on account of the relevant provisions of impeachment. The petitioners are before you, my lords, on account of the fact that the business that the framers of the Constitution ordered, one, for appointment of a nominee to take place within 14 days, and for parliament to do it within 60 days, somehow happened within four hours. But Lord, those are the principal reasons why we are here. And what is the immediate context? The immediate context, my lords, and uh, why we are here is that when petitions are filed, the duty of this court under Articles 19 all the way to 25 is to ensure that it decides whether or not the violations as alleged by the petitioners has taken place. My Lord, the way in which the law, and this is express positive law, requires that to be done is by way of a judgment. By way of a judgment is the only way that the, that, that, that the people of Kenya would be satisfied. Have these rights been violated or not? In order to ensure that that judgment, which is the express constitutional mandate, is given in circumstances that are not academic, Article 23 of the Constitution provides that conservatory orders may be given. When this matter went before your brother judges, probably a sister also, in their wisdom, they directed this matter as such of such an omity that we need to preserve the subject matter. That subject matter, my lord, the preservation of it would be to ensure the relevant office remains vacant until this case, through a judgment, pronounces itself. But my lord, why are we here and why is there a heated discussion? We are here and we are having a heated discussion because what is the clear intendment of the constitution is being circumvented so that to ensure that the subject matter is not preserved. My lord, this would be akin to a situation in which somebody comes and says, 
I am being evicted and my things are being removed. A court says, stop the eviction process up to where it has occurred. Then the respondent comes and says, no, leave those uh, orders so that I can carry those things that I was, it is alleged I was unlawfully taking. So that my lord, in the face of the fact that what conservatory orders are supposed to serve, I beseech you, and I believe the entire country would expect that there has to be preservation of the subject matter of the application. So that my lord now, that being the context, it is absolutely important well, that we do not lose sight of the moment. It is heated, one, because there was a sitting on Saturday. Before application responses could be made, we found ourselves here. We were supposed to come here on Thursday. We are here on Tuesday. So that, my Lord, and there are a lot of matters that directions must be given. So that, my Lord, that context would be absolutely important because when all is said and done, the critical issue before this court is a right under Article 25, the right to fair hearing and human dignity. Right to fair hearing and human dignity cannot be violated even during an emergency. My Lord, that being the background, I ask you, and we shall be asking you, because that is the context where all these things are happening, that you ensure that whether heaven falls, the High Court must stand up for nothing else for the right to preserve the subject matter until this high court pronounces itself through a judgment. Because that is express law. <coughs> Having said that, my lord, I come to the prayers. The prayers are like this, and we have already indicated. There are about six substantive prayers. The linchpin of these substantive prayers, my lord, is the fact that and the Deputy Chief Justice, under Article 165, does not have the power to appoint or assign as the words used by the Constitution members of a certain court to hear the matter. My Lord, Article 165.4 is very clear. Where the Constitution say the President and Article 149 can nominate Kindiki, there is no argument that is made that a minister or somebody else can be made. We expect that. There can be no feasible argument where the Constitution has expressly said that the Chief Justice shall do something. The Chief Justice, in this case, did not impanate this bench. My Lord, we are urging this honorable court to make a finding that unless the Constitution is interpreted or amended to give the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, the power to impanel a bench by express reading of the Constitution, she cannot be able to do that. Issue number two, my Lord, is that it is not for nothing that uh, it is one of the biggest occasions that the senior most judicial officer is the one that the people of Kenya, judicial power in the first place vests in the people. Judicial power by express words of the constitution or to do this appointment and work under Article 165 was vested on the Chief Justice. It is not by accident. It is by the express intention. So that, my lord, on the face of it, when a state officer who is not directly mandated to do something ends up doing it under public law judicial review, it is done every day. You did not have the power under statute or the constitution to do that. There are so many cases, starting with Mado versus Republic, I think it was sometime in 1974 where somebody at city council did something where the law did not allow that person to do that. So that, my Lord, all these cases we are aware of. So that, my Lord, as far as Article 165 is concerned, we submit that that is not possible. But, my Lord, this argument is developed a little bit further by the petitioner's applicants. 
Because the petitioners, applicants are saying that the Deputy Chief Justice, having usurped the powers of the Chief Justice, she proceeded to do two things. One, to sit at night to appoint a bench, and to authorize that bench that sat on. On Saturday, to conduct their business on Saturday. But those are irregular because, as we are saying, when this, this is not a matter of public emergency. Of course, it was a matter of public emergency before the National Assembly and before the Senate. But because of the timelines we've given you, my lords, it is not a matter of public emergency. But Gemfire, having found herself in that situation, she decided to treat this matter as one of public emergency. Then, my lord, she directs come and sit on Saturday. We have set out in our applications and in our affidavits. There must be certain circumstances under our laws, the High Court Administration and other Act, that can justify for any bench to sit outside the on Saturday and Sunday. There must be express reasons. Those express reasons, as we sit here, agreed. We still do not know them. And if we do not know them, every, every Kenyan would be aggrieved by a decision made in these circumstances, would have every reason to be concerned that from the word go, there was a conspiracy to commit injustice. My Lord, all of you have been honorable members of the High Court. There cannot be where there is no public emergency for occasions to arise that for the first time you would effectively be accused. You engaged yourself in a conspiracy to undermine the Constitution and to defeat it in a manner that would amount to treason. So that, my Lord, the point that we make is that in the absence of a public emergency, what has so far happened is not only just unconstitutional, but something that would amount to violation of the Constitution and something that would amount to violations of the penal code as far as the issue of observing justice is concerned. My Lord, for argument's sake, we proceed to make that argument. Let's assume that there was an emergency. We submit there was none, but let's assume there was one. If there was an emergency, then it was incumbent upon the Chief Justice to read, and they were in the newspaper and in the news, all these cases that honorable judges of the High Court from various stations had recommended to, for a bench to be appointed to hear them, to consider them and place them for hearing on Saturday and to fast track that hearing. But my Lord, what is it that happened? My Lord, what actually happened is that you have a situation whereby the respondents, who are basically agents of the government of Kenya and its various appendages, have gotten their applications to be satisfied and to, for a bench to be specially convened to see it because from the standpoint of the petitioner, to set aside the conservatory <laughs> order in order, as the petitioners contend, the violations of the constitution may be completed. My Lord, justice in this case, if it means anything, it must mean a very simple issue. The multiple violations of the constitution that are already ingrained and embodied in the various applications, <laughs> We cannot allow them to be completed because this is what it's all about. This is what the decisions of the Chief Justice was all about, to complete the serious violations of the Kenyan Constitution. By your oath of office, your lordships are committed to stop arrest for death and the government and its appendage, appendages that act in this manner. My lord, what does it amount in law for the Chief Justice to say you have about 15? or 20 cases, as I hear from my learned colleagues who have been in this matter longer than me. Uh, I'm here today for this matter. And I'm here because there is a constitution in Kenya. My Lord, that's being the case. There has to be satisfaction 
If the chief justice and she's a party in this application cannot be able to justify, why did you choose to address the grievances of the Attorney General and the government of Kenya and leave the petitioners? The first right of hearing under our constitution, I deal with Mutunga rules every day, is that the petitioner will have their rights to be heard to prosecute their case. That is what the Bill of Rights means. The respondent, even under Mutunga rules, will respond and answer the allegations that have been made. But my lord, where the Deputy Chief Justice chooses to fast track the grievances of the alleged violator, common sense has to be affected. My lord, the conscience of this court must be bothered. Such conduct in a normal sense of things. We went through the removal of judges during those days. There was just minor infractions of the right to be heard. And judges were shown the door home. But my lord, here, it is a systematic decision consciously made that would have very harmful effect for the jurisprudence of our country and for the meaning of our constitution. So that my lord, uh, so that my landed friends can be able to speak for themselves, we are alleging that as long as the bench has been appointed by the Chief Justice who has declined to follow the fair process for purposes of appointment of the various judges to see, there cannot be a valid appointment. Not because I and my colleagues here would have anything on a good day before any of you in the Russia. We have done very many matters. You have courageously stand up for the constitutions in various matters. But my Lord, unhappy, we have to be the ones saying that it would appear to a section half of this country, if not three quarters, that you have been enlisted in service of the violations of the constitutions. My Lord, I 